Good morning, everybody. Thanks very much indeed for coming this morning. Um, I just wanted to say before we start, um, looking at the agenda, um, just for correction, um, the members on the agenda, uh, Councillor Virginia Moran. Thanks very much indeed for coming this morning. Councillor Virginia Moran was mentioned rather than Councillor Judy Smith. Um, so our, um, our Democratic officer will, will change that for the record to let you know. Okay, um, so I don't think we've got any members of the public here. So if we could go to the Democratic officer for apologies. Thank you, Chair. We have apologies from Councillor Jill Thomas and Councillor Amanda Wheeler and Councillor Hilary Westrop is substituting for Councillor Judy Smith. Thanks very much indeed. Um, <clears throat> disclosure of interests. Um, if anybody has got any interest, a personal interest or prejudicial interest in any of the items that we're discussing this morning, if you could let us know at the appropriate point. Thank you. Um, looking at the previous minutes, which you have here, and the action notes from those minutes, um, I think we had... Um, after the arts pop-up presentation, which we had going back in March, seems like a long time ago. Um, actually, um, there has been some good work come out of that because um, I've actually been able to work with um, Sam Rodden um, and we have um, appointed an artist to be um, at the Deeping Lakes as an artist in residence, which is the first time we've done anything like that in Deeping. Um, we've managed to get funding for it from various sources, local and from South Kesteven. Um, so similar to the uh, program that Arts Pop-Up had at Langdyke, um, which was in Helpston, we're now having um, an artist at the Lakes who will be working with the youth group, um, with older people in the library um, during the summer. So the idea is to be able to work outside in the open um, and also to, um, you know, bring the work inside as well and raise awareness really of the um, fabulous um, Deeping Lakes, which is such a, it's, it's a, you know, real um, jewel in the crown of Deeping St. James. So I'm delighted to be able to do that. But what was interesting was during um, lockdown, a lot of people were using wild spaces, which are kind of obviously precious um, as sort of public parks almost and going swimming and various things. And, and so there needs to be, we felt, um, a kind of restatement of the nature of the nature reserves. So um, this was going to sort of draw attention to that as well. So that was something positive that came out of that um, item in the last agenda. Um, with regard to the um, visitor economy, I think we're waiting for a fuller report um, from Mary Powell regarding the visitor economy, which is um, on its way. Um, and I, we have the KPI performance report um, is going to come up at the at this meeting and it's on the agenda. So I think those are the action notes. Thank you. Has anybody else got any updates from the previous meeting they'd like to share with us? No, I'm right, sure. All right then. Okay, well, I think Barry is going to be presenting item six on the agenda, which is the development of sport and physical activity strategy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to be back in the chamber for, I think it's only about my second meeting since we're all back here. So um, i just start off by a quick introduction and I'll go into some more detail. Um, I'm delighted to bring this report to you today. I very much welcome the committee's views, input at the beginning of what will be a very important endeavour for this council. Within the corporate plan, the council has committed to the development of a sport and physical exercise strategy to underpin our corporate priority of healthy and strong communities. As this very important work develops, it will be vital to set out how the council can positively impact the health and well-being of the district and reduce any barriers to participation. I strongly believe that the development of the strategy could not have come at a better time, especially as we consider how best to support our residents in response to the ongoing impact of COVID-19. I'm keen that the result of this work will be a sport and physical activity strategy for the district as a whole, which includes and takes account of national and local priorities, 
and also supports the work of the other organizations and associations engaged in the delivery of sport and physical activity within the district. It is proposed that the strategy concentrates on the priority outcomes, which were agreed and included within the leisure contract between the council and Leisure SK Limited. As detailed within the report, these outcomes have been further developed into a proposed set of key themes, which will form the base of the strategy and the resulting action plan. And if I take you through the report here, which I think is quite important, it goes into a lot more detail, but I think it's worth just highlighting some of these. Um, so the background is the Council's Corporate Plan 2020-2023, which identifies a healthy and strong community uh, key priority, especially in the light of COVID-19. Commitment to develop and adopt a sport and physical activity strategy for the district. It will focus on preventative health care. Uh, communities positively influence the health and well-being and activity levels of residents. Sport England have acknowledged uh, the significant role that sport and physical activity plays in improving the physical and mental health of the nation. So it's not only the physical, it's also the mental health that we're looking at here. January 2021, a 10-year strategy uh, uniting the movement was unveiled, which focused on the role that sport and physical activity has in the economy. The benefits of physical activity are well documented. For young people, sport and physical activity helps their bodies and minds to develop. The older generation, uh, it reduces the risk of illness, such as heart disease, stroke, and certain types of cancer and osteoporosis. Mental well-being by reducing anxiety, combating loneliness, and reducing the impact of socialization are also positive effects that sport brings. Sport England's active lifestyle data shows that in 12 months between 12, uh, May 2019 and 2020, 41.1% of adults living in SK did not meet the recommended 150 minutes a week. And children and young people uh, between the same period, 2018 to 2019, 46.7% did not meet the 60 minutes of activity per day. I think this is, this is so important to know those statistics and to bring that into our whole program. Uh, during, uh, the ninth, uh, uh, during the 9th of March 2021 meeting of the Culture and Visitor uh, Economy Overview and Scrutiny Committee, now this meeting, members considered the priority outcomes for inclusion in the Council's leisure contract with Leisure SK Limited. The committee agreed to receive six monthly re reports detailing the progress made against these outcomes. So I think that's going to, uh, you know, it's, that sort of approach will ensure that there is synergy and to facilitate the promotion of, and collaboration uh, to improving physical activity levels and the health and well-being of the district. So if I then uh, come to what I'm asking now, what I propose is that I'm very much looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the proposed scope and content of the strategy. The recommendations within the report are that the committee, one, considers whether there are any further actions required in relation to the proposed scope and key themes in the proposed sport and physical activity strategy. And two, agrees to receive and consider a draft of the sport and physical activity strategy at a future meeting of the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much indeed for that, Barry, Councillor Dobson. Um, does anyone have any questions? Councillor Fellows. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, got it. Um, it's a question and almost a statement because I, I read this report and was amazed. Well, at first I thought it's gobbledygook and don't understand it. So I read it again and thought, no, you do understand it. And it is very obvious, but the amount of work it covers is phenomenal. And for me, I broke it down in, into two distinct areas. There was the area which Leisure SK can provide and can directly influence, but there was also the very important area of what communities themselves supply. For instance, and again, I do apologize as I do always relating it to my hometown, 
But in Bourne, so much physical activity is provided by clubs, by groups, by individuals, by a whole plethora of organisations that provide leisure and, if anything, have provided more leisure during the lockdown. So the, the welcome of what SKDC can provide through the leisure industry is, is amazing. But And I think that is where we can directly influence and make sure that what we offer through those organisations starts to tick boxes and is almost running 24-7, even though I know that's ridiculous. But the most they can offer, the better. So breaking it down into those two groups, I think, is important. Whether or not it is possible or it is um, advisable to have a breakdown of availability of clubs available, so that if anybody wants to find out where their little nine-year-old can play soccer or whether uh, an elderly person wants to find out where to play bowls. I was at Bourne Bowls Club on Saturday, and that is amazingly successful. And whether that's possible or necessary is one area. Perhaps if SKDC Leisure wanted to go out, they could actually make a list or make available to people. But I understand how complex that is. But again, taking Bourne, junior football clubs, the bowls club, tennis clubs and i the same will be the same across the region so actually pull together and understand what's happening there would be very complex if not impossible but great if we could so then i broke it down into it so i think we need to support the actions but also we need to include think about potential facilities again Bourne has just opened an all-weather football pitch at elsia park we are hoping at last to break ground on the famous skate park in Bourne and again would value as much support as SKDC can give us to make that actually happen generations after it was first muted. So it's a hugely complex thing. And I think what you're doing, Barry, is, is the start. And I don't envy you having to move this forward in any shape or form. But I think we can directly influence Leisure SK. And each one of those institutions perhaps could be a hub of bringing together what you're suggesting. So um, those are my thoughts on it. And I've probably got a million more that I've forgotten. So <laughs> thanks, for the, thanks for the report, Barry. And, and again, it's those elements of stating the obvious but in many ways that as a council is what we have to do leisure is so important getting people but i am heartened in as much as during the last lockdown people have been walking they have been availing themselves of facilities they actually don't want to go back to work because they're having such a lovely job having a good time which is facetious and i apologize for it but um that's my thoughts on it thank you thank you council fellows would you like to come back yeah Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thanks, Paul. That's really, really, really interesting. And I have already taken a lot of interest in Bourne sports activities, especially the rugby club. I was invited round um, maybe 12 months ago now by um, one of the town, one of the parish councillors in Thirlby, who, um, um, who, Alan Thomas, who is, I believe, president of the rugby club. And he said, we want to put up a new uh, building here to so people can get changed. We can have mixed rugby teams and, and so on. And I went round and I took our planning officer around and that made it so much easier for them to get that planning application through. I don't know all the sports clubs, um, but um, I'm sure there are a lot. And uh, if ever they want to see me to come down and talk to me or me to come over to see them, I'm more than willing. And that goes for any of our major centres, Grantham, um, Deepings and, and Stamford. Um, I have visited all four leisure centres. That's not where Leisure SK begins and ends. It has a wider brief. So, you know, also gardening, by the way, is also a leisure activity. And we have seen in our, in our uh, garden centres, for instance, Waterside, which is close to us, uh, just people in there flocking in there to buy uh, compost and God knows what else plants uh, and it's the business actually I work in packaging and uh, in my, my day my day job and we cannot believe the amount of compost that has been sold this year is just it doubled in uh, on quantity it but it's getting people out there people taking interest in something different you know I go through our garden I look at the plants and I haven't got clue my most of them I know what roses but you know it it's People are taking a lot more interest, and that stimulates the mind. And it's the mind as well as the body that we're looking at. 
what I thought in that report, and that's why I wanted to read it out, that young people have only got, you know, the, the, the target is 60 hours a week, which I find absolutely, well, mind-blowing, really, Then adults are meant to do 150 hours a week. I would have thought it would be the other way around, really. But, it, you know, it's all these things we need to look at. So, and I've got a great person by my side here, uh, Karen Whitfield, who, um, you know, is Mrs. Sport herself. I mean, she's designed lots of leisure centres and we're looking at improving some of our own here. Um, and, and Grantham, did you know, for instance, that Grantham hosts the National Water Polo Championships? You know, I didn't until I went up there. Um, you know, who knows about it? We want to advertise these things and get people interested in all sorts of sports. So I, I know that's a bit of a ramble, but I hope that tells you if people want to see me at Bourne or in any of the other towns, I'll gladly come over and talk to them. Just picking up on something Councillor Fellows mentioned, and that, that is the plethora of, of clubs and societies and so on that there are in each of, I'm sure, in each of the four uh, main towns, certainly in Deeping, you mentioned Bourne. Um, it also occurs to me, certainly in Deeping, that we've got a lot of newcomers to the area who, who aren't aware of, of, of what is available. And I know it's always difficult to um, put a directory or, or something like that together because it's almost as soon as you put pen to paper or put it on the web, it's out of date. But is there a role for us in terms of facilitating those kind of activities? Could I ask Karen? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think that's ultimately possible. I think what, within the strategy, there will be a clear action plan. So we really want to engage with those local clubs, organisations and societies. And we're really keen that this is not our strategy as a council. It's actually a strategy for the district. And taking Councillor Fellow's point, you know, we want this to be the document that makes the case for investment in leisure within South Coast Even District Council. So, you know, that's those other opportunities that may come along, improvements to our own facilities, and also signposting to clubs, organisations and societies, because we really need to address the data. We've got health challenges within the district. We've got physical activity issues within the district, which ultimately may lead to additional health challenges. So how do we identify the gaps? How do we identify the barriers to participation? That's the work that we really want to encompass within the strategy. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much indeed. It'll be interesting to see that rolling out because... As Councillor Fellow says, it is, it's very important and there is, there is really good work going on, um, you know, with, with local groups and has been for years, but it's become more sort of put into sharp focus now, I think, because of the, the, the desperate need for people. How, how many hours did you say, Councillor Dobson? 150? 150 for adults and 60 for young people. Right. It's a bit daunting, isn't it? <laughs> I do count my steps. Not enough, probably not enough. <laughs> Sorry, is anybody else wishing to ask any questions? No? Any comments? Yes, Councillor Wastrop. Is it worth actually going through the schools because you then catch them at an early age and if they have a leaflet or a, a, a place to go to find information, they would then take it home to parents who then could actually then do something about it? Or Yes, that is a, obviously the schools are a great way to to inform a wider group of people as well. Yeah, Karen. Yes, exactly. That's a really good point. And actually, if you get youngsters at a really young age, then you've got more chance of keeping them engaged in physical activity as you go along. So, yeah, that will be part of the discussions that we'll be having in forming the strategy. It says sixty minutes a day for children. That's a day, and the other one is actually. Week. Oh yeah, I, 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 good point. <laughs> I was reading that. I thought this was quite right, but yeah. So no, obviously my my obviously I didn't read it properly. Um, <laughs> sixty minutes. They've changed it, and that's why I thought isn't that strange? But that's an hour a day, isn't it? So, so sixty minutes a day for children, but one hundred and fifty minutes a week for adults. Right? Yeah. But well, thank you very much. Uh, I was just wondering where I was going to be going for my 150 hours a week. 
Yeah, but I think you're quite right. But and one hopes that the schools are actually taking physical education, you know, as a main uh, part of the curriculum, uh, important uh, as being important. And, and I sometimes wonder, you know, it's always very boring at school, I think, you know, oh, you've got to do it, you've got to do MPE, and it's, you know, all the stars and you know, push ups and God knows what else. You know, it is when they get out and do physical activity in our leisure centres, there's so much more for them to work with, you know, from weights and, you know, the weight room, the, the spinning room, and so on. I mean, if you haven't you know, I hope everyone has been to one and had a look at it. They are pretty good. I know some cases we've got to uh, bring them up to speed, but we've got in new equipment. Um, we spent a lot of money on it. And, and everyone seems to be, even the staff, seem to be so much more with it now uh, since we took over. And, of course, we, when we did take over on the 1st of January, um, we're in lockdown. So, but what did everyone do? They got hold of a paintbrush, you know, cleaning tools and everything went through the whole lot. So they've all been redecorated, which I think is a great, you know, great, uh, a great outcome. Yes, that's great. And of course, there is also implications for the, the, uh, the arts and culture with dance. We've got great dance schools and um, in the area that what is a disappointment, of course, and is a challenge for our arts team is that we haven't been able to put on the events that we normally would, which would give those groups of people the opportunity to show off their, um, you know, their prowess, really. So I think that's that's a shame. But obviously, hopefully, as we go through this summer, it will become, um, you know, we'll be able to do some more of those those sorts of events. And, and um, yeah, because there are a lot of dance, you know, there's lots of, you know, physical activity isn't just gym is it or you know it's it, it covers a lot of things and it does overlap with as you say with gardening and and all the rest of it yeah and walking but, but also in a leisure uh, leisure sense we've got some climbing walls as well now not that there's a sport that i've ever taken part in but my god they're, they're pretty vertical but they, you know they're there for you know young people who want to you know do that more adventurous stuff indoors and uh, in safety actually talking about walking and cycling I think that is something that we're covering with the visitor economy isn't it in terms of the strategy there um building on the the walking routes and the cycling routes and so on um cycling has become even more popular during lockdown I think than it was before and obviously that's um uh, yeah it reminds me that I saw uh, on on Hull where they've they've made cycle lanes they've closed off the traffic lane and made cycle lanes and there's so much more congestion now than there was before so i think all that has to be done you know very carefully but you're quite right i mean walking is also a fantastic exercise for older people you know they can you know most people can still walk and even you know yeah so i think that that's good and uh, it's interesting to see, for example, Grimsthorpe Castle, um, who have done a lot of work over the last year there in terms of their visitor, visitor attraction sort of areas. So they've built their car park, um, you know, made their car park much more accessible now, and they've got walking routes through the site and down to the lakes and so on. Um, so that's, you know, great to see our visitor attractions as well providing. And Burley Park, which isn't quite in South Castephen, as it sort of borders us, I think, crosses the border. It. But that, again, you know, seen lots of people going there for walks. But it's nice to see Grimsthorpe coming, coming on board with that because that's relatively undiscovered, I think, you know, in, in the past. So that's good. Good. Thank you. Any, any, any other points anyone wants to raise? Okay. So moving on um, <clears throat> to item number seven, um, which, uh, which is headed up as the Corporate Plan Key Performance Indicators 2020-21 Update. Um, as you will remember, the Corporate Plan 2020-23 was approved at full council in October 2020. And we subsequently agreed the KPIs and performance targets for the actions in the remit of our committee on the 17th of November. The report that I will now invite Ken Lyon to present to us is an overview of performance at the end of quarter four last year, i.e. the whole of 2020, 21. 
Um, can I encourage members to engage strongly in the performance monitoring as it is a key function of our committee and working together will help us to achieve the best outcomes for the residents and businesses in our district. I'll invite Ken to give his update now. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, uh, Madam Chairman. So uh, just to draw att uh, members attention to the report uh, in the agenda pack. So there's a cover report uh, and then two appendices. And most of what I will be talking from is in appendix one, which is the update against the corporate plan uh, indicators. Uh, and then the appendix two provides some other background information. And just before I start, actually, just to, to say, uh, Ben Russell is here with me, uh, who's the performance uh, lead performance officer in the organisation. He's done uh, a huge amount of work in the, in preparing these reports. And um, so, just to to, uh, to say thanks to Ben for that. So, um, yeah, by way of introduction, so the information attached is a quarter for performance from last year, uh, and what it does is sets out where we are on the journey to achieving the corporate plan ambitions uh, and ultimately to be uh, to achieve the vision of being the best district in which to live to work and to visit and obviously this committee plays a really key role and the remit of this committee in in, in achieving that uh, particularly around being the best place to visit which is uh, where a lot of the actions are in scope of 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 this committee fall so um as I say, just to draw your attention to Appendix 1, uh, you'll see there's a, a red, amber, green rating. So, so green means uh, the actions are on track and currently expected to, to deliver the action within the expected time frame, frames. And, and of the six um, actions in this committee's board, um, remit, there are three that are in that position. Uh, amber means that they're, um, they're currently off target, but delayed by, but either by less than 10%, or um, they're delayed, but with a new date or a mitigation plan uh, to bring it back on track. Uh, and there are also three actions uh, rated as amber. Uh, and red means that they're off target uh, and they're not anticipated to deliver and they're, they're of uh, significant uh, concern. And at the moment, there are no actions uh, in that place uh, in the committee. So um, in general, what will happen is I'll uh, introduce the report, give a brief overview, and then there's officers from the various departments and, and the relevant cabinet members who will be better placed to answer any questions of clarifications, which I'd encourage you to ask. But I just want to draw attention to three things just put, to point you through in the report. So the first is um, a real positive story around the South Stephen markets. Uh, so uh, I think we all know the South Stephen markets performed uh, uh, brilliantly last year in, in terms of um, operating, uh, changing the way in which they operated uh, to uh, to be agile and flexible to fit with government legislation and enable SK to continue to um, to offer markets to residents and businesses in in our towns um, as as uh, were planned, which a number of councils weren't able to do in in in, um, in such a in such a way. So I think that's worth really uh, really highlighting, and that in its own uh, achieved the the target for for last year. But actually, um, the, the other thing to, to highlight is the um, financial performance. So the amended budget uh, projected a deficit of about 118,000 through the year, but uh, the outturn position uh, has shown that actually the deficit was, was down to just over 60,000, uh, which represented a, um, a 57,000 improvement, which is, is worth noting. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot of work to do uh, with the markets team and through the, the cabinet member to continue to get that that, that service into to the best possible place, but I think it's worth highlighting that 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 positive uh, from from last year. Um, second thing to to highlight is the uh, 2020 visitor economy figures. So just to say, there's a that's an externally collected figure, and there's a time lag on it. So we would expect by the time the, the committee next meets to be able to give the visitor economy uh, position uh, uh, the 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 spend in the visitor economy uh, position for for the whole of 2020 at that point. So uh, what we've included is the the figure that came through in in last July. Um, but I also want to draw your attention to the tourism strategic framework. So we had a verbal update at the last meeting. Uh, and um, I think as a, as a committee, um, you, were, were ex you were expecting um, a, a further written update on that to, to come in the future. So, um, and that I know is a priority for the cabinet member, which uh, the committee will, will, will look forward to, to receiving. Um, uh, and the final thing just to draw your attention to, um, and as an officer, I'd recommend that as a committee, you, you perhaps consider including this on the, um, uh, on the, uh, on the forward plan. 
Uh, so um, there's, there's an action around improving and investing in the art centres uh, and for lots of uh, reasons, but largely around uh, gaps in, uh, in resourcing issues in the property team, uh, that, that full five year plan hasn't, hasn't come forward yet to, to the committee. Um, and, uh, but I do think that would be something that um, is, is worth the committee spending some time uh, delving into and, and understanding. Uh, and so therefore I've, I've recommended in the appendix that, that you consider um, in, incorporating that into the, uh, the future work program, uh, which, uh, uh, so, that, that, so that you can have an, an overview of what that, what that program might look like going forward. So uh, that's, that's, that's me for the report. Obviously come back with any questions. If, 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 if I can answer them, I will, but otherwise other officers or cabinet members will, be, um, will, be, will, will uh, respond to any queries that the committee have got. Thanks very much. Thanks very much indeed, Ken. <clears throat> Are there any questions coming out of those? Do any of us have? I don't have a few minutes to digest them. <clears throat> um, I think it's talking about your last point there I think there has been work hasn't there going on um, at the art centers during um, during lockdown which has taken advantage of the fact that the theaters have been dark and so we've been able to do work there so that's been expedient hasn't it to get you know so I think that's quite a quite a good thing that we've done moved very quickly I think the cabinet member and the officers have moved quickly to get that sort of in train and I believe also used existing staff as well to to do, do things if you want to comment on that or I think it is an item for future uh, agenda yeah no I think that's a, that's a good point I don't know if the cabinet member would like to comment on that because I think there's um I'm sure she'd like to, to highlight some of the good work there Thank you very much, Ken. Um, yes, um, we have taken advantage of um, the lockdown, um, particularly, um, shall we say, we'll start at term Bourne Corn Exchange, because I know it's close to Councillor Fellows's uh, heart. And um, I must say that um, without the boys there, um, I think we would not be in the position that we are now. They have not only done a marvellous job, but they've also saved us money, which at this present time, um, with finances as they are, I think, um, you know, they should be congratulated. Um, also, um, at Stamford, um, we've managed to um, do a complete one roof. We've got, I think it's two more to deal with. They've been patched, but... Um, it's uh, unfortunately not going to last that long. We're painting the ballroom. We're um, also doing some uh, redecoration in the gallery. Um, the toilets are on our hit list as well, as well as the front and the windows, but that's something that will come up in this plan. Um, at uh, the Guild Hall, uh, we've also been looking at that, of how we can um, improve that. Fortunately for us, it's not needed too much work. Uh, the toilets again we've obviously got, I've got a fixation with toilets because uh, they're on my hit list um, and uh, also uh, the aircon at the guild hall is something that we're going to have to uh, look at uh, or we are looking at um, and hope to be uh, complete uh, this financial year that's great thanks very much indeed for that um councillor fellows sorry guys just had to um what I'm, can, can I congratulate everyone who's moving the the, the physical um, advancement of the art centres is absolutely brilliant. But I do feel in these particular times, what we will need is almost a huge input of energy to go with the community as he comes out of the present predicament to allow so much to happen, as much as we can allow to happen and as much as we can encourage to happen. And I know that will be on the on the mind of Michael. And I know that's on, on, on all our minds because that's basically what we want. And so in the work programme, when we come to it, it's I would like to see a very definite movement forward to use these refurbished facilities to you must hyperdrive them. I, I just picked on, on one little, there are so many, and it was on page 24. And obviously, those who know me will probably realise why I sort of bogged it. It was the first sentence. The measure will include delivery of range for events throughout the year, whilst Sir Isaac Newton and Baroness Thatcher, very often, and then I went through a list of all the very famous people in South Kest Stephen that we need to embrace and look on. And again, I won't bore you all with the people who came from Bourne, like, but I will do. Raymond Mays, 
um, Burley being born in Bourne, um, Frederick Worth, just to name but three. And every single one of us could go around the area, our poets, our creative people. And I think there's a whole watch of work there that if as a committee we can get actively involved in to use our culture, for instance, follow Harrywood the Wake's path across the South Fens as it came into South Kestephen, have signposts up, encourage people to walk. And I know I'm doing my usual um, shotgun thinking, which is very, as Americans say, in the clouds thinking, but I feel that we need to embrace the fact that we can really move on with this strategy and it's going to require effort and creativity, which I know we've got, and then use the facilities we've been developing with people like Michael and his team. I know that we can positively do something because there were elements of when I was reading the report, Ken, of me going, it's locked down. What can we achieve? And now we've got to bury that and go, we're coming out of lockdown. And what can we achieve? What we can achieve can be absolutely wonderful and move forwards on all the angles we need to work on. Yes, absolutely agree. I think the challenge is going to be sort of, you know, so so tricky, isn't it? Not knowing, you know, not giving a date, you know, to it and being able to say that's it, it's all behind us now, let's move forward. Of course, the, the challenge is at the moment that we're not, you know, we're still not really quite sure about how the future will pan out at this precise moment. So we've just got to hope for the best. And but I think we've got to, to look forward because there has got to be a balance between mental um, health and physical health hasn't there and I don't think we can keep people away from culture and visit economy um, and, and and leisure activities and sport um, you know as much as we have done going forward because that would also be very counterproductive in other ways so it's sort of balancing and that's the challenge for I think this this group of people here is balancing all those challenges and it's not been easy over the last year and the fact that we're all here and you know the work that has been done has been a, a you know obviously a, a credit to to our officers and I think to this committee so I'd like to thank you all for that because it has been you know I hate to say the word unprecedented but let's hope it, it has been and it won't happen again um but um uh, yes, and I absolutely agree. We do have a whole, just a whole fantastic group of, of, of um, famous names in South Castephen, who we and Margaret Beaufort, who is was certainly a woman before her time, um, in you know the power behind the Henry the Seventh throne, um, you know had really strong links with the Deepings, and she actually her uh, insignia was the portcullis. And so you see the Portcullis logo on the tower in St. Guthlock's Church in Market Deeping. But of course, it's also the logo of the House of Commons, the Palace of Westminster. So it's, you know, um, in that it goes all the way back to those Tudor times and the Wars of the Roses. So it's really important to remember um, a champion of, of, of you know, of, of one of our kings um, actually had, I think she had a palace at Collie Weston, actually, but she also um, stayed in a castle in Maxey as well. Um, so there were, you know, there's all sorts of tales to be told. And I think people locally will be in, when I say locally in this country, will be looking to explore our shores as much as, you know, and of course our, our population is growing as well. So there's huge potential there. Um, and I hope we can really draw on those things going forward. Can. So that's uh, really helpful, Councillor. So just to say that um, there'll be an opportunity to, at the end in October, which is the anniversary of the corporate plan, we'll be doing a review of uh, all the actions in it um, and whether or not um, there'll be instances where the, the targets and the KPIs need to, need to change because the circumstances have changed. Um, and if the committee wanted to have a think about uh, how they could help shape what that looked like going forward and input into that um, input into that um, measure. Uh, that would be something that I, you know, as a, as a performance, as Ben and, and, and I looking over the corporate plan performance stuff, we'd welcome any input from the committee in doing that uh, ahead of that review. So that may, that may again be something for you that you want to, um, to look into as a, as a discussion point uh, as, as a committee, really. That, that's certainly something that, you know, we, we do need to obviously continue to discuss on the committee and think about. Um, yes, thank you very much for that, certainly. I think the markets as well um, need a mention, and particularly um, Paul Stokes and his role in, um, in in keeping those markets going. I know he's not here today, but I, I know that he did a lot of work um, 
with with his team to keep that to keep the, the markets on the on the road. And I think we I think we were quite unusual in the whole country. A lot of markets shut down um, across the country, um, but we we kept ours going. And I think that was very good for the local economies. Um, and for people, because it gave them a focus and, uh, you know, and, and it, what it didn't mean was that they had to start from a baseline, again, you know, for, of nothing, you know, to build that back up. So when you keep something going, um, it does mean that you you gain more than you, you think you have because you actually haven't lost anything, which you probably would have done if you hadn't kept it going. You see what I mean? Um, so. Um, yeah, so I think he did really well with, with those markets. And I think we've done, and I think it was interesting to see that we didn't lose as much um, as we thought we were going to. Where do you think that those savings are coming from and how can we replicate them going forward? So, so that's more detailed than, I, than I'd know. I don't know. Uh, it probably needs Paul Stokes to answer that question. We can go back to him and then get him a, um, get, 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 get a response on that, unless anyone else in the room knows um, uh, knows where that no that's um uh, but we'll ask uh, we'll ask Paul to give a, an update on how that on how that was achieved. I imagine it was perhaps the sort of perhaps more uptake in, in fact or Councillor Charlotte Bellew. Uh you took the words out of my mouth um councillor it was um particularly uh in Grantham um Stamford we never have any problems with um stands trade stands uh stalls sorry um but at Grantham it's always been rather um, small take up but because now we've got a lot of um, people that have been furloughed they've looked at their business they've decided that they'd like to try something new and one of the first uh, things they thought of was let's try my new business out of the market and uh, I think that we've been um, the benef beneficiaries of that um, so um, I think in all um, to keep markets going Bourne has certainly um, had a, an improvement um, and um, I just think that um, the best thing we did was to keep the markets open when we could. It encouraged people who were a little bit nervous about going into a supermarket. They felt more at home being out in the open. And I think it's definitely been beneficial to us as a council. Um, and hopefully it will you know, help new businesses grow as well. It's also interesting to see... Um, out of after the the lockdown, um, we've got in certainly in the south of the district, um, a couple of really large um, farm shops have been, which previously were very small, have now um, grown, built new facilities, which are, you know, encouraging a lot of people along. I know it's not in our area, but Fine House Farm, which is on the on the on the kind of it's in Deeping St Nicholas, so it's right on the border of um, Deeping St James. But they've just, with leader money, I think, and they were helped with with finance for the, the building. But they've just built a fantastic new um, farm shop there, which obviously also incorporates um, a big uh, wildlife pond, and that will encourage bird watching, um, which is again another hobby which has um, sort of come to the fore. I think over over this period, interest in wildlife and birds has been enormous. So, Councillor Charlotte Belly, um, I was just going to say that um, although we don't um, have anything to do with the Deepings Market, we have been liaising with them, and uh, we have managed to provide. Um, a, co a connectivity between some traders and the deeping. So I understand that um, a few people that couldn't get in to say they wanted to get into Stamford, they have gone to the deepings, which is um, marvellous to think that um, we are also helping a market that actually we're, we're not directly involved in. Yes, that's great. And uh, conversely, we've um, the Deeping Business Support Group, which was a group that I know has been supported by um, councillors from South Castephen and Lincolnshire County Council last year, um, has worked with a number of local businesses, one of which was a chap who was um, made redundant from Thompson's, um, and he set up travel agency. No, sorry, it was um, Thomas Cook. And um, he set up his own um vinyl selling business you know, vinyl records with new ones not vintage ones um, and he um, has had stands at Grantham and in Stamford um, and been selling online as well and I think his business is doing very well so that's an example of, of, of what you've just just spoken about and also of how the D Deeping Business Support Group was able to help him to develop his website and his social media 
Um, he's pretty savvy anyway, but we were able to, to help him some more. So that was good. So good example there. Any other comments to, to Ken while he's here with us? Right. So moving on um, to the last item, I think, on the agenda, which is the work plan, which I believe you've all got a copy of, um, and which I think we'll be having a fairly meaty meeting in September. Um, so those items will be coming up then. And I think the anniversary of the KPI will be in the following meeting, will it, Ken? So at the next meeting, you'll get the, the quarter two update, and then we'll do the full review of of, um, of the the previous year at the at the December meeting. Yep. And also, there's the um, the six monthly update on Leisure SK as well coming up, isn't there? So there's so you're happy with how things are panning out in that direction at the moment. Yes, thank you, Chair. We're preparing and uh, ready to bring that report to September. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed. Um, is there any, any other business that we need to discuss? I don't think. So um, thank you very much indeed for your attendance this morning. Um, I'd like to bring this uh, meeting of the Culture and Visitor Economy Overview and Scrutiny Committee um, 22nd of June to an end. But thank you very much indeed. It's lovely to see you all in the flesh um, and hope our next meeting will be back here um, in September. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Councillor Fellows. Oh, sorry. It's an advert, nothing to do with...